All right, we're gonna be practicing with some word problems today. So, when the plumber comes to my house to fix the leaky faucet, he charges a flat rate of $50. I always like to label any flat rates as my start. So that is my starting value. And then, in addition, he charges $22 per hour. So this is my, because it has the word per, I know this is my changing amount. It's the amount that's going to get multiplied by the number of hours. So this start is also a Y intercept. And the change is a slope. So if I wanted to build this into my favorite equation of all times, Y equals MX, this would be M is my slope, X plus, and then my B is the Y intercept. All right, then this one right here, this is my total. So if I just wanted to build this into an equation, it would be my total equals my starting value plus the amount that gets changed times the number of things that happen. So this, in this case, this would be the hours, okay? So we could just build this equation. It looks very similar to this one. It's just been reordered a little bit. Uh, these guys were flipped around just a smidge. So let's go ahead and put my numbers in here. So my total is 116 equals 50 plus 22x. Now, you can solve this. We can solve this in another video. Right now, we are just setting up our equations. That's all we're doing. This one doesn't fall so nicely into the y equals mx plus b equation um, because we're talking about three different consecutive odd integers. Consecutive just means that they are next to each other, next to each other. Okay, they're right next to each other. Odd is like one, three, five. Let's actually do a few examples of this. So three consecutive integers could be one, three, and five. These are odd and they are in order, one, three, five. But the problem is one plus three is four, four plus five is nine. So my total here is nine, but I wanted a total of 237. So let's try a few other ones. Let's try some bigger numbers. Um, maybe 20. Let's try 20 as another example. So is 20 odd? No. So I have to go to 21, then 23, and 25. These would be the ones in consecutive order. So 21 plus 23 would be 24. 24 plus 25 would be 49. I'm still pretty far away from that goal that I want. One thing I can say is if this one right here is X, then I can notice that this is plus two and this one here is plus two. Four. Is that the same for this? This is plus two. And then to go all the way over here is a plus four. That does work out. So I can actually model my three consecutive integers by just calling this one. This first one is going to be called x. The second one is going to be called x plus 2 and the third one is going to be called x plus 4 and then I can have all my integers when I don't know what they are so my equation here could be x I'll write it up a little higher x plus 
x plus 2 plus x plus 4 equals 237. Kind of a fun equation and a fun way to look at odd numbers and integers. Um, so we got a lot going on in here. I like that one. All right. This one gets confusing. You purchase five tickets to a football game from an internet ticket agency. An internet ticket agency. Why was that hard for me? In addition to the cost per ticket, the agency charges a convenience charge of $250 per ticket. So since I see that word per, I know this is a changing amount. It's the amount that comes with every single ticket. You also pay for rush delivery, which costs $15. That's just a fixed starting amount. So that's just a fixed amount. And my order total is 350. Now, wait a minute. There's no way five $2 tickets is gonna add up to 350. So I must not know the price per ticket. So this is an unknown right here my price per ticket is unknown. Some people might think this is the price per ticket. No, that's just the extra fee. So I'm gonna call the price per ticket X. So I'm gonna have X plus the charge, the 2.5 that comes with the price of my ticket. How many of these tickets did I get? I got up here I got five of them so I'm gonna put a five right there and then I have my fee so I'll say plus 15 and all that equals my total of 352 and 50 cents now lots going on here but I'm gonna go ahead and distribute these and solve but we will save that for later all right, let's go find our next question. Here we go. This was my favorite one in the batch here. Find the angle measures of a triangle if the first angle is 31 degrees more than the second and the third is five degrees less than twice the first. Show the equation as well as the complete answer. So I'm gonna just draw a little picture of this and we're gonna label the corners on this triangle. Oops, that's not a great triangle. There we go. So I'm gonna call this angle A, this angle's B, and this angle is C. Now, I don't know what my triangle looks like. I just wanted to draw a random triangle here. And something that's not mentioned in this story is some truth that you know that the measurement of angle A plus B plus C, we know that has to be 180 degrees because every triangle adds up on the inside to 180 degrees. Now, let's find the angle measures. So it says the first angle, okay? The first angle, oops, let's go with green for my first angle. So this one is going to be green. My first angle is 31 degrees more than the second angle. So we're gonna call the second angle blue. And let's just say that this one is blue here. So B is gonna be blue. Okay, so we're gonna say this. We're gonna say the first angle A is, because is is equal, 31 degrees more. So I'm just gonna write 31. And if it's more, it is a positive 31. Then the second angle. So then I'm gonna add in the second angle here, B. All right, so now I have a nice equation right here. I have A equals 31 plus B. Then, the third, so let's go with red for the third one. The third is five degrees less than twice the first. So what is my first one? I'm gonna call that my 
green one again. So the third one is going to be red. All right. So I'm going to say C is reading this is five degrees less. So I'm going to write a negative five, then twice. So I'm going to have to have my twice the first and the first is the A. So let's put that in green. All right, whoops. So now I have a, another nice equation right here. And my third equation is the one that we wrote up here and I'll do it in color code this time. So I'm going to have A plus B plus C equals 180. So now I have three equations and three unknowns. So I'm just going to go ahead and plug stuff in. What's fun is I can just go ahead and plug things into the B and C. So I'm going to choose to plug stuff in to the B and C and I'm going to want to only have A's in my equation now. So let's solve this one. Solve for B so that it can get plugged into here. So all I have to do to solve for B is do the opposite of the 31 here to get B by itself. So I do minus 31 and minus 31 and I will get see these cross out and I will get a minus 31 equals B so this is a nice new equation that can get plugged into B so this is going to get plugged in right here and this is going to get plugged into here so I'm going to end up with an equation which just has this part this B is going to be this B from over here so I'm gonna have a minus 31 in that spot and then I'm gonna have my plus my C I guess I should angle off my C here a little bit erase that so my C is this term so I'm gonna have a parentheses negative 5 plus 2a oops and my a comes down so I have a and then equals 180 that's a lot a lot happened here and I get one nice long equation that we will solve uh, later so this equation we're going to solve later. Amy's cellular, so, cellular phone service, she pays 32 per month. Now my ears are tingling. If it's 32 per, that must be a changing amount. Plus, um, this one for each minute. Now this actually got me tricked because it's the it's going to be how many minutes. So this is why word problems are confusing. Uh, even though it says per month, since I am talking about minutes as my x, this is actually going to be my starting value, my start, and this right here is the each minute. So this is the changing amount. And then here is my total. So for Amy's cellular phone service, she pays 32 per month. That's each month she pays 32 plus 75 cents for each minute. So we're gonna take 75 times the number of minutes and I'm going to call minutes x. That's what I'm gonna do. 
let's build this equation. I'm going to have my total. Well, the equation is going to match the y equals mx plus b, the y, whoops, let's change that to a pen, y equals mx plus b, where the m is the change, and the b is the start, and this guy over here is the total. And then this is my input, or in this case, my minutes. All right, so the equation, when I plug it all in, will give me a 47 equals 32 plus 0.75x. Moving on. We'll solve that later. 5 times the sum of x and 5 is 8 less than twice x. Wow, they really are trying to make your life confusing. So 5 times the sum of x and 5. So let's do the sum of x and 5 first. Okay, so we are doing the sum. Sum means add. So I'm going to take x plus 5, and then I'm going to multiply that 5 times. So I'm going to say times 5, and then is is the same thing as equals 8 less. That means it's going to be a negative 8, then twice x. So that twice x is just going to be a 2x. So now I have this nice equation that I can solve for x. Now this one is the same as before. This time it's just integers. It's not odd integers. So my examples could be just 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now if I add up 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, 1 plus 2 is 3, 3 plus 3 is 3, 4 plus 3, 4 plus 6 is 10 that is not 110 I need to get bigger numbers let's try 20 what if I had uh, 20 and 21 22 23 1 2 3 4 that is four consecutive they're all in a row and what does that give me so 20 plus 20 plus 20 plus 20 gives me 40 and then or 80 and then 1 plus 2 plus 3 gives me 6, so this would be 86. I'm getting much closer, but I'm still off. Let's do the same thing we did before. If this guy is x, then this guy is x plus 1. This one is x plus 2. And this one is x plus 3. So my overall equation is going to be set up to equal 110. So I'm going to say x plus x plus 1, parentheses, and then plus x plus 2, plus x plus 3. All that is going to equal 110. And we can solve that in our next video.